All right, dear students, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The topic for today is overheads. We have a question from book, and let me read the question. This is a case study for exam. The name of Maja. Maja manufactures component for electrical guitars. Okay, uh, there are three departments. Let me highlight the important information for you. Three departments. Two of them are production departments. and which of them are production department one is electrical assembly and another one is final assembly so basically there are two assembly departments and both of them are obviously production and there is one service department with the name of stores and store is a department that supplies raw material to other departments production departments okay so store is indirectly supporting production and shipping store and shipping okay so this is one of the department store and shipping maj has the following overhead now as you can see beta overhead is given for all four departments management salary uh, this is the overhead given and what we need to do we need to split these overheads into these three particular departments uh, one of the overhead category is management salary uh, then we have building insurance then rent and rate then employment insurance this is uh, insurance of employees additional information is also given such as floor area floor area is basically the base on which we would divide one of these overheads and then we have labor hours also as a base stores and shipping costs are reapportioned on the basis of we'll read this afterwards now there are some theoretical concept let us discuss these explain the term variable cost beta you must be aware that variable cost is the cost that vary with the level of output this means beta if we are making more units of working more hours then the cost would increase and if we are making lesser units than the cost would decrease so variable cost is the cost that relates directly with the level of output now what is the solution being given by the examiner an expense or cost that vary directly in proportion to activity an activity can be uh, maybe hours or activity can be number of units or it can be raw material okay so raw material is an example of variable cost then we have uh, something else uh, known as Uh, explain the difference between semi fix and semi variable semi fix and semi so beta there are two types of cost uh, although uh, in many courses uh, these are terms are known in interchangeably used semi fix and semi variable so but you can remember by this way that another name for semi fix would be step fix cost okay it is known as step fix cost Now, what is the step fix cost? Semi fix or step fix cost is constant over a range of output. But once that activity level is reached, the cost will increase and then remain at that level until the next limit has been reached. Now, let me explain you with the help of an example. Uh, for example, beta, uh, we are talking. We have a school, and for that, uh, or maybe Montessori, and for that, we have decided that there should be. student to uh, teacher ratio should be a uh, teacher to student ratio would be 1 uh, ratio 10 what does this mean this means beta if we have uh, up to 10 students we would uh, arrange them in one classroom okay so even if the, we have a one student single student admission and if we have to start the classes we would need one teacher okay so the teacher cost would remain fixed up till the number of students of 10 sir ji beta okay beta so if we even if we have one student we need one teacher but the teacher cost would remain fixed until we have more than 10 students okay and if there are more than 10 students beta we would decide to split the uh, batch into two okay and for now uh, for 11 students we need two teachers so the semi fix or step fix cost will be constant till 10 students but once the activity has reached the 10 student then the cost will again increase why because now we need two teachers now the teacher cost beta would remain fixed until what limit until number of students are 20 or more than 20 okay if there are 21 students so again we need to split the batch and then we need another teacher so the teacher fix cost would again increase Okay, so this is known as beta semi fixed cost, also known as uh, step fixed cost. Okay, so the cost increase in step fashion. Then uh, we have a semi variable. Semi variable is simply known as mixed cost. And what is this mixed cost, beta? Any cost that is a mixture of both variable and fixed. 
For example, we have an electricity or telephone bill and even if we are out of country, still we would get some of the bill and that bill would be the meter rent or line rent. Okay, that would remain fixed no matter whether we use the service or not. Okay, but what happens if we keep using the electricity or if we keep using the telephone, then the variable charges beta would increase. Then the variable charges would increase and electricity bill is an example of semi variable cost or the telephone bill. So in that we have a fixed line rent or meter rent and that is fixed and the variable cost is what uh, the variable electricity charges okay, or the variable telephone charges. So this is known as semi variable. Another example may be a salesperson's salary in which the salesperson is being paid a fixed salary uh, uh, upon joining for a particular hours of duty and maybe the variable element such as commission okay or commission would be paid to the salesperson uh, when they sell more than a particular uh, number of units so there is another uh, requirement third requirement is explain the meaning of the term absorption of overhead what does the absorption means absorption means beta charging overhead to the products okay using some suitable basis a basis of recovering the total cost of production department by the jobs passing through the departments or maybe the units that they are producing this can be labor r rate or machine r rate so overhead is basically absorbed to jobs or products based on labor hours or machine hours and we use labor hours beta when the department is labor intensive and we use machine hours when the department is capital intensive okay and we can just simply use number of units as well why uh, when there is only a uh, when when there is only one product we can divide the overhead with the number of units and if there are multiple uh, type of products then we can use labor hours or machine hours okay let's see the fourth requirement we need to calculate the total overhead for each of the production department so for that we are doing a uh, apportionment okay for each of the production department now we need to make this table and for this table first of all we have a column uh, known as overheads and the tables must be given to you in the exam then we have uh, one of the production department name electrical assembly then we have another department final assembly and the third department that we do have is stores and shipping now the difference between these three is first two assembly departments are production department and store and shipping is service department let us see which of the overheads are given beta the first overhead that we are being provided is management salary that is 20,000 sterling. Now the question arises that the management salary needs to be divided on what? It needs to be divided on the basis of area or it needs to be divided on the basis of labor hours. So labor hours I think would be more appropriate for uh, apportioning management salary. Why? Because the management uh, uh, or supervisor usually manage uh, what? Uh, usually manage labor okay so the more labor hours a particular department has so the more management time would be uh, spended on managing those employees okay so let us see at uh, the base is what labor hours now let us add all of the labor hours once uh, is 8000 second second department labor hours are 4800 and the third department that is store and shipping has 3200 hours if you add up all of these we have total 16,000 hours being worked by labor so how to make the fraction fraction would be 8,000 upon 16,000 or 8 upon 16 means the same thing that is 50 percent of management salary should be uh, borne by which department should be bared by electrical assembly okay 50 percent of how much 50 percent of 20,000 so 50 percent of 20,000 would be how much 10,000 now let us do the fraction for this assembly final assembly the fraction would be better 3000 upon what was the total for this total was 10,000 okay six no sorry uh, total was I guess 16,000 okay so the fraction would be better 8,000 upon 16,000 for first and for second 4800 upon 16,000 and this is 30 percent multiplied by 20,000 that is total over it and this would be 6,000 and finally beta. uh as far as third department is concerned store and shipping we have 3200 hours out of the total of 16,000 hours that is 20 percent of the total overhead that is 20,000 this would be 4,000 so if we add up all of these three the total must come as 20,000 okay 
Now the second one is building insurance. Now building any cost relating to building beta would be charged on the basis of what? On the basis of floor area. So if we add up all of the building costs, uh, if we add up all of the floor area, 6,000, 3,000, 1,000, it would be the total as 10,000. Okay. So we can do 6,000 upon 10,000 or instead simply 6 upon 10, it would be 60%. 60% of what? Of building insurance, uh, it would be 6,000. Okay. Finally, beta, we have secondly 3 upon 10, that is 30% of 10,000, it would be 3,000. And as far as third is concerned, beta, it is 1,000 upon 10,000. 10,000 is the total floor area. Okay. And 1 upon 10 would be 10% of what? 10,000, this would be 1,000. If we add up all of these three, again, it would be total as 10,000. Then we have rent and rate, but a rent and rate would also be divided on the basis of this floor area. Again, 6 upon 10, 60%, 30%, 10% of what? Of rent and rate, that is 7,000. So 7,000 times 60%, 7,000 times 60%, it would be 4,200. 7,000 times 30%, 2,100. And 7,000 times 10%, 700. If we add up all of these three beta, this would be the total as 7,000. Finally, we have employment insurance. And employment uh, employees related or base would be uh, not the area, but uh, labor hours. Okay. There are only two bases given. And uh, it's not necessary that one base can be used to apportion one over it. It can be used for more than one over it. Uh, as we can see in this question that uh, the labor hours is being used for to labor related cause uh, that is management salary and employment insurance and floor area is being used for two building related over it that is building insurance and rent and rate so let us complete this employment insurance it's total 6000 and we need to divide it on board basis on the basis of labor hours now the fraction was 8 upon 16 that is 50 percent then 30 percent then 20 percent so 50 percent of 6000 would be 3000 and 30 percent of 6000 would be 1800 and 20 percent would be 1200 so beta we are we are done with the apportionment step and uh, for apportionment what we do we need to divide the overhead into all of the departments now we have two types of uh, departments here uh, two of them are production and one of them is service now let us add service department over it first and that is 69000 now beta what we need to do in the last step we need to absorb the overhead and the overhead can only be absorbed by the departments that are producing the goods, such as electrical assembly and final assembly. Stores and shipping is not producing any goods. So therefore, the stores and shipping would be unable to apportion the overhead, okay, uh, unable to absorb the overhead. So what we need to do in the third step, that is reapportionment, we need to uh, reapportion this 69 overhead uh, into these two production departments. Now the question arises, sir, what would be the base? to apportion the stores and shipping department. So normally as far as stores department is concerned, number of store requisition is given. Okay. Number of, or value of store requisition is given. But here uh, it is mentioned that store and shipping costs are reapportioned on the basis of what? 75% should be reapportioned to electrical assembly. And the rest would be obviously 25% to the final assembly. So what we need to do better, we need to divide this cost in the ratio of 75, 25. So 6,900 times 75% would be 5,175 and 6,900 times 25% would be 1,725. Now, as you can see, beta, finally, all of the overhead has been uh, gathered here, have been collected in two of the department that is production and assembly. So assuming you have no further question, let us go for the next step. And the next step that is requirement number five, we need to calculate overhead recovery rate for each production department. Overhead recovery rate, but are also known as overhead absorption rate. And for that, we need to calculate OAR. And what is the formula for calculating OAR? But a formula is budgeted overhead upon budgeted activity. Now you must remember beta, that uh, overhead absorption rate would only be calculated for the production departments and not the service departments. Okay. So the service department does not make products. So therefore they cannot absorb their overhead. So the overhead would be absorbed by only production department. Now let us calculate the uh, rate for electrical assembly first. 
So the total overhead for electrical assembly we have already calculated as 28375. Now the question arises, sir, what would be the base for electrical assembly? Now, as you can see, beta, we haven't uh, been provided with two bases. We are being just provided with one base that is labor hours. Okay. So therefore, what we need to do, beta, we need to divide the overhead with labor hours. So uh, if we are being provided with machine hours and labor hours both, we need to see the question. We need to read the instructions that which base the examiner would use, maybe the labor hours or machine hours. And if the examiner doesn't say anything, we would go for the higher number of hours okay if labor hours are more than machine hours then it would be labor intensive department and if machine hours are more than labor hours then it would be capital intensive but in this case as we can see only one hours uh, are given that is labor hours so what we need to do better we need to divide it with 8000 labor hours and the rate we need to calculate it to two decimal places it is 3.55 per labor hour so it's better to write this per labor hour uh, sometimes examiner doesn't give you uh, one mark because you skip this per labor hour phrase. You just write 3.55. You won't be getting full marks. Then we have final assembly. So the total overhead for final assembly would be 14625 beta. And how many total labor hours are given? Total labor hours for final assembly are given 4800 labor hours. So beta, if we need to, if we divide this with number of hours, the rate would be what? Rate would be 3.05 per labor hour. So finally, beta, we have calculated the overhead for these departments. Now let us see the last requirement. Evaluate the use of labor hours in calculating the overhead absorption rate. So beta, why would we use labor hours? Because the labor hours are more than machine hours. This means that both of the departments are labor intensive. Okay. So there are more humans working than the machines. Okay. So if the uh, uh, department is labor intensive, and each of the uh, for making each of the products uh, there are separate number of hours being uh, worked by each department to complete a job so or uh, to uh, make each particular product so therefore the labor uh, department would be more intensive so the overhead tend to relate uh, uh, based on labor rather than something else rather than the material okay let us see what is the examiner said uh, points in favor why would we use labor hours so this method would be suitable if the production process is labor intensive. Okay. We discussed that and it considers the time factor. Okay. So overhead relates to the time. Okay. The more hours would be worked, the more overhead would be incurred. So the lesser hours we would work, the less overhead would be incurred. And it is easy to calculate and understand as well. So what points would be against whenever the examiner says evaluate. So we need to write both positive points as well as negative points. Okay. So not suitable if production is capital intensive. Obviously, if the production is capital intensive, then the overhead relates to the machine hours and not the labor hours. So in that case, we would be using number of machine hours. But in this question, the machine hours are not given. So therefore, we didn't consider those. There is not difference between the time spent by skilled and unskilled labor. So if the production is be based on the machines, then it doesn't make any difference that the labor is skilled or unskilled. They are just uh, operate machine operators and they can operate the machine uh, with a simple minimum skill. Okay. So there is no difference between skilled labor and unskilled labor. But as far as labor intensive department are concerned, uh, there are some semi skilled labor, highly skilled labor and a low skilled labor or unskilled labor. So we need to keep the difference between all of these three levels. Need to maintain records is time consuming and costly. Okay. So labor intensive would be time consuming. Why? Because we need to record uh, the labor hours uh, in total and the labor hours spent by uh, each worker. Okay. The hours spent by each worker uh, in doing the, in making the particular number of units or doing some particular jobs. Okay.